Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Servants by Design podcast. I am so excited you are here. My name is Stephen Boster. I am your co-host, along with a wonderful special guest that I am just geeking out about being here with us. Um, we have Dr. Nate Regeer here, and he is going to help us uh, understand what is compassionate accountability. So, or, or, or hopefully we get it. <laughs> Hey, here at Servants by Design, our goal is to help you live a healthier, more connected, spirit-filled life with yourself, with God, and with others. And I'm going to be open with you. Today's discussion is going to hit all three because this is truly um, just a fabulous, fabulous book. And so to be open with you guys, um, we are actually pre-recording this uh, before the book launches, um, but I guarantee you, you're going to see links down below where you can pre-order the book and or also get the book off of your major retailer. So um, this is exciting stuff. As you know, many of you, Nate was with us a year ago when we launched the podcast and, uh, and spent time with us. It is our number one uh, audio and video uh, podcast that we have. So we're excited to have him back. Um, and so I don't want to say this is quite a follow up off of that one as more is probably a deeper, deeper detail kind of a thing. So we'll get into that, everybody. But first off, um, I am I am pumped. For those of you who do not know who uh, Nate, Dr. Nate is, um, uh, Nate Regeer is a PhD. He is the CEO and founder of Next Element Consulting. It is a global leadership consulting and training firm. And what they do is they help build cultures of compassionate accountability. Now, uh, Dr. Regeer is a former practicing psychologist and expert in social emotional intelligence, interpersonal communication, conflict skills, and leadership. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, he is a uh, sought-after keynote presenter. He's recognized as a top 100 keynote speaker. He is the author of four books, not just one, not just two, but four books. Uh, he's got Beyond Drama, Conflict Without Casualties, Seeing People Through, and his newest and latest book is Compassion Accountability, specifically How Leaders Build Connection and Get Great Results. He also hosts his uh, podcast called On Compassion with Nate, writes a weekly blog, contributes to multiple industry publications, and is a regular guest on podcasts such as ours here at Servants by Design. Whew. And above all of that, Nate is just one splendorific guy. So, Nate, thanks so much for being here with us. Wow. I'm I'm blushing. Thank you, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> Great to be with you. It's good to see your face. And um we like we said we are gonna we are gonna make all our troubles go away for the next hour, hour half hour, and have a great time. Like I'm so glad to be here with you and yeah. your listeners. Thank you, thank you. Well, I'm excited about having you. Um, for those of you who who are listening or watching, if I seem a little bit more giddy, it is true because I enjoy the time. <laughs> I enjoy the time with Nate. Oh my goodness! So hey, real quick, everybody. Um, I want to get this out of the way real quick. If you're curious to know more about what Next Element does, their website, or if you want to contact Nate, it's Nate at Next slash or dash element.com. You can check them there. If you want more information about the book, um, it is a uh, next dash element.com slash compassion accountability book. And um, again, these links are down below for you as well. And if you're curious more about Nate, you can catch him on his LinkedIn profile at LinkedIn slash in slash Nate Regeer. Or you can just go to the website nextelement.com and you will find all kinds of information about who they are and all the cool stuff that they do. Well, Nate, welcome aboard. After Thank all of you. that, here we are. Hey, I Woo. want to show everyone. I know. Are we ready for a break yet? Right. <laughs> uh, I want to show everybody the, the book here real quick. And for some reason, we have technical difficulties because we just tested it. That's okay. Um, Nate, real quick. Well, with the, Michelle, maybe I should just hold a copy up. There. there we go. Yeah, we both have. We'll both hold it up. We'll see if we're twinsies. There we, there go. we go. Compassionate accountability. Um 
let me ask you this with is this technically a follow-up off your latest or the not the last book but your conflict without casualties yeah it's an interesting you asked you you comment maybe we'll go deeper it's you know this is actually a sequel and a prequel at the same <laughs> okay. time. i don't know what you squeakle i don't know what you call it <laughs> so you'll notice that the the term compassionate accountability is in the subtitle of my book Com conflict without casualties mm -hmm. and it is the title of this book so what we're what we've done is we really elevated the fundamental principles that have been that elevated and have have evolved and refined the fundamental principles that have been part of next element part of the work that we've done from the beginning mm -hmm. uh, people that know our other work or who have worked with us will recognize the themes they'll recognize the 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 vibe of this book but it's a lot of brand new stuff and some whole okay. new whole new methods and models that we've never put out there before so if someone was asked, they see the book, they come across it in a bookshelf and it says compassion and accountability. What is compassion and accountability? Well, to quote Stephen Boster, what? Okay. What, <laughs> what is compassion and accountability? <laughs> well, you know, it's crazy. These two words right here, we've coined this <laughs> phrase in, oh, probably 2015, 2014. And um, every time people see it, they have like two reactions. The first one okay. is what, <laughs> you know, like, wait, those two words aren't supposed to go together. And then the second reaction right. is, wait, what if they did, wouldn't that be mm -hmm. amazing? So there is this kind of sense of, yes, that's the pain I can relate to, but at this end, at the same time, man, I wish we could have those two coexist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, with, with the concept of these two coexisting. Okay. So with, cause they are you would think two totally different terms that, you know, mm -hmm. kind of juxtaposed together, but what's with this book, what was your purpose behind it? Like what was the problems that you're trying to solve Yeah. Um, when it comes to compassion and accountability? The problem is as old as humans really. And there's two, there's two things about being human that make us uniquely human. One of them is that we are creative problem solvers. We are creators. Okay. Um, we are built in the image of the creator. We want to create, we want to build, we want to do things very achievement oriented. And mm -hmm. we are relational creatures. We were built to affiliate. We cannot exist by ourselves. And so there you have it getting results versus building relationships. And as long as we have been trying to come together as humans to get stuff done, we face mm -hmm. this dilemma that when push comes to shove, which one do you choose? And yeah. that's the problem is everybody has a default. Everybody's going to pick one or the other uh, when push comes to shove. And either way, you lose. Mm. Mm. Why? Why Why is it either way you lose? For those like, no, I want to yeah, live yeah. by compassion and things. And other people like, nope, you got to be accountable. Where, there, where there's no accountability, there's no motivation. You know, that kind of a – Yeah, uh, well – our, of course, our context is primarily in businesses where, where people are trying to work towards goals together in a community. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we work a lot in the community too. Here's what we found. Compassion without accountability gets you nowhere. And here's why. You can't nicey nice your way to big results. Case in point, I have never seen, I, I spent 11 years as a psychologist working with victims of domestic violence, and I have never seen a victim of domestic violence love their abuser into changing. Mm. Mm. The opposite is also true, Stephen, that accountability without compassion gets you alienated. No longer can leaders just bring the hammer down and say, just because I said so and do it or else, and you're lucky to have a paycheck. That used mm. to work. But when you look at the younger generation, the new generation, you say that to them like, and they're like, peace out. I'm bouncing, right? I'm out of right. here. Yeah. I'll take half the pay to not be treated like that. So what I, what we say is compassion, accountability without compassion gets you alienated. So mm -hmm. that is a result of picking one over the other. And actually in the book, I have some pretty detailed lists of what mm -hmm. does it look like and sound like and feel like when we're choosing one over the other, neither one is sustainable, neither one works and neither one gets mm -hmm. us towards our goals. Yeah. So with, with that as your purpose and goal, what, what have been some experiences in applying 
um, compassion and accountability. Um, you focus on the, the workplace primarily. Mm -hmm. So what have been some, some neat stories that you've experienced where it's really gone really well, where people yeah. have applied it? Just, I think it, when I hear compassion and accountability, I think hope. And sometimes yeah. stories help me envision and have that hope. Yeah, I'll give you a story, a real story of hope. So during COVID, we were working with a large medical system and doing a lot of work with their all of their leaders coming out of COVID. They were so stressed out. They needed a reboot. A reboot. And we were mm. working with this one surgeon, pediatric surgeon, who was also a, a department director. And she was struggling with this dilemma that surgery is a very high stakes, high stress situation for everyone involved. And every time it was, every time it was getting close to surgery, she was barking orders at her nurses. Everyone's running around like chicken with their heads cut off. Got to get paperwork done. Got to get signatures signed. Did it all. Got everything ready. And it's this super stressful drama filled prequel to an event where you want to be at your best. You have a child in the room whose family is desperately scared and they want to know you got this. And what she realized is the way this is going is not sustainable. I'm choosing accountability over compassion. And this is a very, very tough situation. So she decided I'm going to try something different. I'm going to do both at the same time. So she gathered all of her nurses together before a particularly high stakes surgery with a four-year-old. And she said, you know, everybody, I just want to come clean with you all that I'm scared. I'm anxious. Mm -hmm. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm worried that if I tell you, and she goes, it's not that I can't do this. It's just that every one of these is scary. I care so much. I want it to go well. And I'm afraid that if I tell you that you're going to think less of me or, or that I'm supposed to be in charge. I'm supposed to be the one that has no fear. And she says, and not only that, but I don't like the way I treat you going into surgery. I want us to be a team. I want us to be working with each other instead of against each other. And she says, I'm wondering if we could talk about how we could do this differently. And when she stopped talking, she thought, you know, what's going to happen? You know, is, is the, right. are, are the curtains going to rip and the <laughs> light and the sky is going to get covered with dark. And you know, what happened right. is all the nurses, they were like, oh my God, we don't like it either. <laughs> we don't want you to feel scared. We're here to support you. And they kind of came together as a team then and just said, you know, let's rally. And yeah. so, so what happened was this doctor said, I don't want to pick one over the other. I have to get vulnerable. I have to be human. I have to ask for help if we're really going to do, do this together, which is what compassion's all about. It went really, really well. And her nurses, it was kind of like a Ted Lasso moment, probably. Um, <laughs> but the nurses, she said these nurses were more engaged. They're more, they want to be there. They're excited about the surgery. They're, they're now willingly going to get all this paperwork because we're working as a team. Um, so that day, she actually made a really critical leadership move that improved her performance, improved her resilience as a leader and a surgeon, but it mm -hmm. also increased the retention and engagement of these nurses who nobody can mm -hmm. find and keep great nurses anymore. Mm -hmm. I just read, um, you mentioned engagement. I, I just read Gallup just released their new Global Trends 2023. And in there it says 8.8 .8 trillion are lost last year was lost due to disengagement mm -hmm. and all. So yep. I, I, thank you for the story. That's fabulous. I love it. Uh, who, for those who are listening then, who is this book for specifically? Well, it's, it's has leadership in the title. And so it is written for three kinds of leaders, newly emerging leaders. It is for what are some of the most critical interaction skills that you're going to need to be able to move from being a doer to mm -hmm. a leader of people who do. Okay. And for those of you that uh, are familiar with the leading out of drama, to not rescue and actually lead middle mm -hmm. managers. This is really about critical interpersonal competencies to be able to, to deal with conflict manage the dilemma between pr people and, pr and, and production and build teams for executive leaders. It's really going to have a whole layer that's about strategy because anything that matters has to be embedded within your culture, strategic within your systems and processes. So it gives people a lens to look there. Ostensibly that's who it's for. Okay. But almost every day now I'm hearing from someone who is reviewing the book, who has got their hands on an early copy that says, I know you wrote this book for leaders, but it's for life. 
Yeah. It is for relationships. It is for family. It is yeah. it, the, the principles in there are applying to anybody. So I'm delighted yeah. to hear that. But, yep. you know, we, we had to pick a focus. You're right. Well, that's why I said at the beginning, you know, w- with our goal to help people connect with themselves, with God and with others. That's yeah. why I was like, yeah, this speaks to all of it. it does. <laughs> Uh, one of the there, there's two there's two concepts I, I want to ask you some questions about. Sure. Um, one is just right near the beginning of the book, which is a very interesting concept that that I think bears some some discussion. And then the second concept is kind of the is the three switches, kind of mm-hmm. the, the big chunk of, of how you've organized the book, which I totally appreciate for my analytical brain. It was able to segment each each part pretty well. Yeah, yeah. But, but the first thing you discussed was this the or the first concept I want to talk about is this pendulum of compassion. And uh, I'm going to see if I can. um, Yeah. Do you have a picture of it? I am going to do my best to bring up a picture of it. Let's see what happens. And voila. There we go. Working on the fly due to technical difficulties. I love it. There it is. So what are we looking at here when we see the this pendulum i see one yeah. side goes to more compassion other side goes to less compassion and i know this is kind of where we were talking about compassion and accountability earlier but yeah. describe what we're seeing here what we're seeing is th- what we started observing during and coming out of covid and that was this this almost th- this pendulum of compassion literally mm-hmm. when the pendulum goes one way there's more compassion and you can mm-hmm. think of scenarios and situations where it's like, wow, there sure was a lot of compassion there. But when it goes the other way, there's less compassion. And we noticed this coming out of COVID because it was kind of like, sometimes people are saying, Hey, we're all in this together. We really need to come together. We got to think about the person. And then sometimes mm-hmm. they're saying, wait, you got to get work done. I don't know if, I don't know what you're doing at home in your jammies. Now it's time to start being accountable. You know, Mm -hmm. enough of this, anything goes COVID stuff. And so it just seemed like organizations and leaders were either all the way on one side or all the way on the other side and couldn't make up their minds. And no matter where they went, it wasn't, it wasn't a holistic solution. Uh, And we particularly saw this, uh, I I illustrated an example in the book with what this looks like with COVID. Um, Would you like me to show that? I'd love to, yeah, to illustrate So here's the same pendulum, but what I've filled in is kind of where we are, where we were at different times during COVID. Right when COVID hit, kind of initially, everybody was scared. Like, oh my goodness, Mm -hmm. what is this? I was just talking with someone right before I got on this call that I met at a conference the week COVID hit and they were shutting down America. It was like the dominoes were just falling. And we both kind of talked about what that felt like. Right. Um, So everybody was scared, but we all were in it together. So we had that in common. So, hey, at least we're not alone. We're going through this together. That's that's kind of a little more compassion. Boy, how quickly did that change? Yeah. Vaxxers versus anti-vaxxers. Mask wearers versus mask wearers. That's not very compassionate because now it's us versus them. Mm -hmm. And you want to take it one step further. Cancel culture was really having a heyday in the last few years. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of reasons for it that I articulate in the book, but but the result is that anybody that we disagree with or don't like, we just make it our mission to go destroy them. And social media and 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 being in the public eye makes it so easy now to just go ruin someone's reputation and their life, even mm-hmm. resorting to violence. And then, you know, down in the middle is kind of you do you, I do me. We're just going to coexist and at least we right. won't bother each other. It's like, what kind of an existence is that? Right. Who wants to just pass each other in the hall and at least not trip each other because we went to the DEI training? You know, it's like, come on. And so really the, the ultimate manifestation is over there far outside, which is, look, we our fates are fully interdependent with each other. We need each other to survive. Mm-hmm. Even Darwin, you know, said that. We cannot go it alone ultimately if we're going to succeed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With, with this this pendulum swing. And I love how you articulated that with, with the, the, because it is part of that section on COVID because that part of the book, you outline kind of the history of compassion and kind of walk through and Mm -hmm. say, here's her compassion. Here's this time, this time, then here's COVID and now post COVID. Um, What do you see as kind of the biggest um, opportunity amongst 
uh, leaders mm-hmm. for you, you alluded to it. So I'm kind of going back with leaders why you wrote it. Yeah. But I, I just think it's it's nice to reiterate why is it yeah. so important for leaders? Here's the biggest opportunity is seeing compassion and accountability as intention or opposition to one another. That's mm-hmm. the problem that already pits them against each other as if we have to choose or we choose or lose. Mm-hmm. However, the reality, and this is the big breakthrough is that they're actually the same thing. And this goes all the way back to a definition of compassion that we originate or that we kind of started coining way back, which is compassion is to suffer with, to struggle with. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you realize that kind of, it's our, it's our, it's in our destiny to struggle. We, we made that decision a long time ago and now we're paying for it. Right. <laughs> so we're going to struggle. The only question is how, and we can struggle in three unhealthy ways, or we can struggle with each other. And that implies accountability because we're in this together now. And I think the hope that it holds is that a both and breakthrough often releases tons of new energy. It also opens up whole new ways of seeing things that you never saw before. Whenever you think about balance or tension, it's like, it tires me out. But when you think about both and breakthroughs, like a third way, that releases new energy and new hope. And so like what that physician experienced is a whole different level of energy, but she was doing the same thing she did yesterday, but with new eyes and a new approach. Um, and yeah, and then it goes on. There's lots of examples in the book about what can be on the other side in terms of how we handle all kinds of difficult, challenging daily situations. Mm-hmm. With, with you, you've present an incredible tool within the book. Um, and, and I remember when you guys first introduced the three switches and it was great. You had the little, the light switches and, 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 but now you, yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, um, I, I want to show everybody on the screen, kind of the, the version that's in the book. Cause you said, this is kind of yeah. how it is now and what you guys have learned through that. And I'm just going to keep it on the screen a little bit just so you can kind yeah. of do a quick overview but i would like to see, for people to kind of experience this is what this book kind of walks through are the yes. switches yes um and so with the switches uh these are now the official three switches of the compassion mindset so yes. when we say compassion mindset what is the compassion mindset all right do you want the 30 second version or the five minute version because i can do both Let's do two let's minute do, version. Let's do the two and a half minute version. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so our definition of compassion is the practice of demonstrating that people are valuable, capable, and responsible in every interaction. And those three words, I, I, I'm not going to go into the history of why we chose those three, but it's it's there's a lot of research behind this. So what we realized is that it all starts with mindset. No matter what it is that you want to do, you have to be in the right frame of mind. Mindset matters. We know that the research is clear. So, so we thought, well, switches is kind of a great metaphor because you can turn on and off your mindset. Mindset's not a skill set. It's something that you make a conscious decision. Um, and so we, we came up with this idea of the switches actually Aaron Chapel Deckard on our team did. And what I, the beauty of it is we, we all understand that that electricity powers things and can do amazing things and it's mitigate it's mediated by switches <laughs> that's how you mediate the flow of energy it's always there ready uh, until you turn the switch on so the idea is when you turn the switch on energy flows the room lights up you can see clearly and when the switches are off energy is blocked and it's dark and and, and you bump around into each other and so when these switches so we we went with it and we identified very clearly, we connected all the work that we had been doing and the research to say, okay, what is the fundamental belief that powers each switch? What is this core fundamental belief about humanity that you have to have? And then what are the behaviors that turn the switch on and the behaviors that turn the switch off? Um, and it's really remarkable how easy it's been for people. I tell the story in the book about the very first time I kind of threw this concept out to a group and it was mm-hmm. remarkable the power it had mm-hmm. to invite people to consider different behaviors just like that. Uh, and so it shocked me cause I was like, wow, people can actually behave differently without an intensive training program where you have to do coached practice and we're going to drill, you know, for hours on end. <laughs> yeah. That's important too, but it's, um, so it's really opened up things and it's, it's people are, 
we have been striving to find what is the most elegant, simple, visual, kinesthetic model that people can just carry with them in their head or carry with them as a sticker on their water bottle or wherever to help them keep their switches on. Mm, I love it. The One of the things that we had gotten a long time ago was the, I still have my Yes, the, the, my switches are on, are on the compassionate yes. mindset and stuff. So yeah, this is a, a a block from everybody. I'm in a in a small group built out of our network that we encourage each other on the model and how to uh, we do practice with each other. So that's kind of our reminder on that. So that's the cool. um, I'm going to show the switches real quick because yeah the 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 three terms that you use I want to reiterate is value, capability, and responsibility. Um, yep. and what happens when they're on and what happens when they're off and everybody that's, that is just a teaser. I'm not asking Nate to go through this cause I really want you to get the book cause, um, it's not just something, I mean, we can talk about it, but I think we would be here for hours on end cause we'd enjoy the conversation and yeah. <laughs> laugh and stuff. So, um, but I want you guys to, to get the book. Um, it is an incredible tool in your communication toolbox and I'll be open with you. It's going to be one that that you are going to use on a regular basis, if not daily. Um, it is um, just having the switches is for me as a visual guy and an analytical guy. It's structured to where it helps me remember. Um, and so I just want to encourage you guys out there just to um, – if there's any book of Nate's that I encourage you to start with, I'm not asking you to, <laughs> I want you to get all four, actually. Well, three out of the four, maybe. No, just easy. Um, but uh, this the this new book that Nate provides is a wonderful read. Um, it's, uh, how shall I say, it's yeah. not your technical uh, psycho babble, like some people like to say those kind of terms, but I mean, it's not that type of a book. It's a conversation yeah. and that's what makes it really good. Nate, well done. Um, hey. on the book. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. You know, I, um, when, when you started earlier by saying kind of the purpose of your podcast, you know, I don't always talk about kind of the spiritual aspect of this. Can I share one, something small that, Absolutely. that I, fe I feel more open and welcome to share because of the nature of your yeah. podcast? Mm-hmm. You know, I alluded to this kind of, yeah, we, you know, we screwed that up early on as human beings, but when you go all the way back to the beginning to kind of, whether you want to call it original sin or, or whatever it is, that makes us human. Mm -hmm. What happened in that moment was as humans with free will, we, we tried to wrest control over the switches. We mm -hmm. asked for control over the switches and we were given it, but it comes with consequences being able to turn these switches on and off towards ourselves and towards each other allows us to feel justified. It allows us to hurt each other. It allows us to go to war. And thankfully though, we were also as humans given something else, which is compassion and compassion is not a free ride anymore. Now we have to struggle, but we get to struggle together. And so I really believe that our saving grace the whole message of the scriptures, the message of almost every faith tradition in the world is you get to make different choices, but it is up to you. And compassion is, is what makes us human. It's what brings us together and it's what gets us back on track when we lose our way. Mm -hmm. And the three switches are kind of an attempt to illustrate that and give us some tools so that we can so we can make the right choice and make the compassionate choice. And I think together we can then can go back to creating amazing things. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you for that. Yeah. The, the creative outlet of compassion, the struggling. Um, thanks for that. And I appreciate that. Thank you. you. It's thanks really the only open. way we can turn our brokenness and our conflict into new creation is with mm -hmm. compassion. Mm -hmm. And with all that's happening in the world today, with all the discussions and rapport and stuff, we do need a tool that helps us walk through. So thank you so much for your work on this. Thank you for the book um, and just living that model of compassion. I really appreciate it from my heart. Thank you so much. You bet. You bet, Stephen. Well, everybody, uh, thank you so much for joining us here on the Servants by Design podcast. Uh, again, I encourage you check the link in the description below. Um, check the, the show notes where it all is there about where to go, where to find this book, 
uh, hopefully we've given you a good rundown of how this is just an incredible book for you, an incredible tool for your toolbox set. So with that, uh, Nate, once again, thank you so much for being here. I sincerely appreciate it. It's my pleasure and joy to be here. Thank you, Stephen. Yep. All right, everybody, be sure to check us out on our website at www.servantsbydesign.com. We'll have a link uh, not only to this podcast, um, but also we'll have links to all kinds of cool stuff there at Next Element along with the book information. Again, we hope God continues to bless you and guide you and walk with you. And uh, we do pray that with all sincerity that God reveals himself to you to help you live a healthier more spirit-filled life with yourself and with others. We really believe this book will help you along the way. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day.